Hey guys, how's it going? So this is our last installment of our Flower Alley container series. So this is part four. Uh, what the experiment is this year is to plant up 10 identical containers. So this is a 14 inch garland jardinier from Unique Stone, all with very simple arrangements utilizing maybe three or four plants per container. Uh, and then just seeing how they do and giving you guys ideas for uh, plant combinations as well as smaller container inspiration. Uh, it was kind of funny, I was trying to find, since we've already planted seven of the containers, I was trying to find the last three of my pots and I could only find one in the barn. And I thought, what in the world, where did the other two containers go? I swear I ordered 10 of them. And Aaron had to remind me that I had already planted them in another uh, arrangement this spring. And so I wanted to show you this plant really quick before I take them out. And I had intended on, when I planted these up, removing this plant and putting it in my garden. So this is not a big deal. It's what needs to happen because I had these in full sun and it's going to be 102 degrees here in a couple of days. So I need to make sure to get these in a place that's a little bit more protected. But this plant is so glorious. This is an I Spy Hopscotch Hookerella. And I don't think I've ever seen one that looks quite this magnificent. I mean, so uniform, so beautifully colored and so full of creamy colored blooms. I've just been enjoying them and it's actually a little bit hard for me to take them out of these containers because I think they're so well suited for each other. But I think that we will have fun seeing these other flowers uh, in these containers as well. So what I do to take them apart, I may as well just do that since I've got to do it for the video. I'm kind of feeling in here, they've been in here since early spring so i don't expect them to be super rooted in yeah i can kind of just rock it out a bit just want to do it gently you can see the root ball right there i have a big plastic container sitting on the ground up here i'm just going to go place this whole container and i'll probably empty the contents of the soil into that container as well so we can start fresh and then later on i'll go plant this in the landscape oh <laughs> look at that it fills the bucket prettiest bucket full of plant i've ever seen I did want to mention that all of these arrangements I've put together previously and today are for a sunny location because I am lining them all up together. They are all connected to the same drip system. We are trying an experiment this year and using the quarter inch drip tubing that has emitters. This one has emitters every six inches and there's five emitters per pot. So that's what we're trying out. Every pot is the same. So these are the plants right here for this container. And I think this is a really interesting mix. So we have the sun credible sunflower right here, which I grew last year. Uh, in the landscape, they get pretty good size. Like they were about here on me, but they'll grow anywhere from 24 usually to 48 inches tall. I'm thinking in a container this size, I'm thinking it will stay a lot smaller because I am restricting the root growth of the plant and the size in which it can grow because it will be competing with other plants. Um, and then I'm gonna be using a Wicked Witch Coleus, kind of the same thing on that. It will range anywhere, I can't remember, 20 some inches, 24 to 36 inches. So I'm imagining this one's gonna stay on the smaller side as well. Uh, plus there's, this one's very easy to size control. And then we've got a lemon coral sedum. And I think it's just a really beautiful, clean mix. So let's put the lemon coral sedum in first. We're gonna plant front to back because it's easier when I'm standing back here. This is such an amazing plant. I find that lemon coral versus other sedums, like, you know, you find a perennial version that looks fairly similar to this. It's not quite as a clean, clean of a yellow. It's got a little more orange in it, but this one can handle a lot more adversity in terms of receiving more water. Um, it can take a little bit more shade I've found. So I've really enjoyed that. All right, next one is our coleus. This is Wicked Witch. I think this one's new this year. Like I was able to grow it last year, had great luck with it, both in containers and in the landscape. Make sure to pack in soil all the way around its root balls. Don't wanna leave any air pockets in there. And then our last one is the Suncredible Yellow. And these will bloom and bloom and bloom without needing to be deadheaded. I didn't deadhead a single bloom off of my Suncredibles last year and they just performed phenomenally and I couldn't even really tell uh, because the spent blooms kind of just disappear because they get so loaded with blooms you can't even notice. You're distracted by how pretty the blooms, the more fresh blooms look. Okay, so the second container is all ready to roll. I'm using four plants in this one. Three, well, all four of which want to get a fairly good size. So I'm interested to see how this one does throughout the season. I think it's gonna be really pretty. So the first one here, this is an angel face super blue angelonia. Grows 30 to 40 inches tall. 
Again, I don't know how tall this will actually grow, grow in this container. And that's part of the experiment this year. I mean, usually in a container like this, I would put like five at least plants, maybe six. So the fact that I'm only putting four in is kind of a, a strange thing for me. So I think my next plant I'm gonna put in is the Diamond Mountain Euphorbia. And this is the largest of the three euphor euphorbias, and it wants to grow a couple feet tall, maybe even a little bit bigger. I'm gonna be planting some of these in the landscape as well in the moon garden this year. So I think it'll be fun to see what it does in the container versus in the landscape. And I tried it out last year and it did great. So I think this will be a really pretty kind of cloudy look coming up from behind. I think I'm gonna put it right behind the Wicked Witch Coleus be a really nice contrast. That's really pretty. Oh, okay. I know I'm going to have to size control this one a little bit because it wants to get about as big as the euphorbia, but that's easy to do with a coleus. You can maintain size by just popping off, you know, branches as they grow. And then it still maintains its really nice shape, which is handy. May have put a little too much soil in this container. And the last one for this container is the sparkling amethyst superbina. I love this one. I know Erin is really um, kind of enamored with this plant. It's a really beautiful one. And it really like, you know, once it grows and puts on a little bit of, you know, thickens up a bit and it just gets full of blooms. It's just the most gorgeous thing. Okay. So some of these from my angle look a little bit awkward size wise. So we'll just have to see what they do through the season. And for my last container, I'm using three different plants. I think this is gonna be pretty because I've got two that are kind of solid colors. I've got the Angel Face Perfectly Pink Angelonia right here that has the really clear pink flowers. And then we've got the Sweet Caroline Light Green Sweet Potato Vine. And then we've got the Super Tunia Picasso in Purple, which has both of these colors. So we've got that really clear pink in the center with the nice chartreuse green margin of each one of the blooms. I think that's gonna be so pretty to kind of tie everything together. Um, so I'm gonna put in my thriller plant first. I'm gonna kind of do, let's see, yeah. I'll do that in the back. Now this Angelonia doesn't grow quite as tall, 18 to 30 inches, but it'll broaden out, it'll create new stems, and we should have just this nice spray of blooms coming up from behind the other two plants. And then let's put this one in next, Picasso in purple such a beautiful plant oh my goodness and it's already so big that's always nice when you can get your hands on some big plants you have instant impact and don't have to wait very long for them to fill in the sweet caroline light green it's already doing its trailing thing and this right here this one will mound up a bit and then it'll take off like this will correct it's kind of a weird right now but it will correct and it'll start bending down like this and it will um, cascade over the sides of the pot i do anticipate needing to trim this one a little bit so you know some of these containers will need a little bit of maintenance in that way just because they're not as big of containers when you're doing these sorts of things in hanging baskets or uh, window boxes things like that or large containers they can you know travel a lot more distance before you feel like you need to kind of trim them up a little bit, but that's total per, uh, personal preference as well. Uh, sometimes I like to keep them trimmed up even when they're in bigger containers because they do look a little bit more tidy. So now I'm gonna load all this one up with my other two and we'll take them over to Flower Alley and show you what it looks like with everything sitting there. I'm measuring these very precisely by foot measurements, <laughs> about two and a half of my feet apart. Oh, this color does not go. Not at all. But this is in order of how we planted them. So down at that end, that is the very first pot number one, and it goes all the way down to pot number 10 right here. So this is Flower Alley right here. I think it's gonna be really, really fun. And we've got the first three, let me show you, hooked up on drip. So you can see there's a half inch black poly tube that's running in the flower bed right here. It goes back and it connects to our hose faucet over there. Aaron got it all set up and trenched over here. And then the drip tube that comes out of the bottom of the container, you can see it really well on that one. I haven't buried that yet. It goes out and then connects into the half inch poly. So I'll show you how I do it to get all my supplies. Ooh, these landscape staples are hot. So let me run over all of the supplies I'm using really quick. I've got landscape staples. That's to tack down the tubing when I'm all done and kind of hide it underneath the rocks. I've got extra quarter inch black poly because I knew that I didn't have a long enough piece to make it back here to my water access tube. So I'm going to have to use two couplers. One will go in the end of this quarter inch. In fact, let me just do it, hold on. We need to add a little length of tubing. So I'm just going to put this together. 
and then cut and make sure I've got a long enough piece to go into this tube here. So I wanna give myself a little bit of slack, about right here. And then our second coupler, I'm not gonna attach it to this yet. What I'm gonna do, I've got, this is a punching tool. This will help me punch a hole into this tubing. This is the really thick, it's called half inch centennial drip tubing and it's like professional grade black poly and it's really thick. So there's no way I could po uh, pop this coupler into that tubing by hand. I have to use a punching tool. So let me do that, it's gonna take some muscle so I'm gonna have to get kind of contorted here. Just slip it over the tube and oh boy that made me look strong it was a lot harder the other day <laughs> and then to get it in the tube i'm using a 3 8 inch nut driver check this out because this just fits right down in there and that way i can just pop it in without having to just murder my fingers in the process and then i will attach the quarter and strip tubing and that's how i do it then we're gonna hide this tube, just ever so slightly. That's what the landscape staples are for. Like that, like that, and then give it one of these. One tried, you could really unearth that easily, but this is temporary. We're not gonna probably have these containers here next year. We'll probably do something different with them, but that's essentially how we're gonna do it on the rest of these. I still have to hook up pots number five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So anyway, that's it for this video. We're gonna be giving you progress updates throughout the season. We'll show you how everything's doing, how it's progressing, um, and whether or not these combinations are working together. There are a few plants that I am interested in seeing, like the coleus. Um, the Wicked Witch and the Golden Dreams coleus both are in the Color Blaze series, which they say they can take full sun. And um, I kind of put them to the test last year, but these are in sun 24 seven, like all day long. And the last year they did get a little reprieve from the sun. So I'm interested to see how they do as well as how some of these bigger plants are gonna do kind of put in small quarters. So anyway, you guys will get to learn right alongside us how they all cooperate with each other. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.